Harvest. Thank you for joining in with us this morning uh, on Facebook Live. For those of you that are members, we miss you guys so much. And if you're listening for the first time, welcome. And we really hope that you enjoy the word that, that we're all going to receive this morning. Um, we're doing things a little bit different this morning. Um, more intimate setting with our musicians. And we have a guest here. My sister is actually in town. So we're actually going to do praise and worship together this morning. Um, but before we begin, I just want to thank God for being who he is, for keeping us safe, for being mighty, for blessing us and, and providing because he has, he is our source. He is our source. And we just want to make sure we lift him up this morning and, and tell him how awesome he is. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. 
Christmas. God has a word specifically for you, so open your hearts and minds to receive, and remember to like, comment, and share. If you are in need of a second helping to get you through the week, tune in to our midweek services every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. You can catch us at YouTube and Facebook Live. Just search New Harvest COG. Matthew 6.21 says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. With technology, giving is easier than ever. Go to our website at newharvestcog.org and click on the Giving tab. Submit your information, type of giving, amount, and click Submit. It's that easy. Again, thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Praise God. Good morning to our New Harvest Church of God family and all those who are watching us. We are so excited. What a blessed, blessed worship service, knowing that you belong to the Lord. And we greet you in the name of the Lord. We are so thankful that you tune in to join us this morning. We are excited uh, to be in your presence once again. We often pray that the present here is going to permeate wherever you are and you're going to be so anointed and you're going to be so blessed through what the Lord is going to bring to us today. I want to share with you this. Uh, we do understand that a lot of uh, our churches have begun to open up, but I want you to understand New Harvest Church of God family, all of the visitors who is going to be coming to us. We're going to take things slow. We do understand that there are a lot of things still are happening. We have to figure out ways that we're going to do it more, most efficiently and effectively because our main goal is to protect you, the body of Christ, the family of God, the members, and everyone walking through those doors. We want to make sure that we have things in place. So as for now, we're going to continue to have our services like we're having. We know that you're being blessed. We know that you're being uplifted. You're being delivered. Amen. Yes, you're still saved. Hallelujah. And the church is still is the church. Amen. That in which we are. So we want to encourage you that as things progresses, as things changes, we will be letting you know. Amen. And we love you so much for your continued support. Praise God. Now, as we begin to, to get into the word this morning, uh, there are some things that we want to begin to bring out to you that we know that you're going to be blessed in our doing this morning. Uh, we have been dealing with, we understand that this year, 2020, has been a year of pushing the limits. Pushing the limits. God desires to do what? That we push the limits. Amen. More than ever before, that we expand, that we increase. We get into those areas that God has called us into. And we're pushing the limits in our love. And we're exploring how God expresses his love. Amen. He loves us so much that he sent Jesus. Glory to God. First, we talked about God's love would express in witnessing. Jesus said, I have need to go through Samaria. Amen. Why? He broke down barriers. He broke down racial barriers, culture barriers, uh, gender barriers. Jesus went there and used the most unlikely candidate that, that you thought he would ever use. We as a church would have went by this evangelist, which was a woman that had five husbands, and the man she was living with was not hers. But how God changed your life. And she went to spread the good news. So we understand that God expresses his love in our witnessing. We also talked about God expresses love in provision. Amen. He fed 5,000, not counting women and children. Hallelujah. So if he fed them, don't you know he's still feeding us today? Matthew chapter 5 says, listen, you notice how the birds, they neither no sow nor reap nor gather in the barns, and Jesus still provides for them. So if he feeds them with provisions, definitely he has already provided for us. And he wants us to rest in him. Hallelujah. Allow him to be a father to us. Amen. Just stay connected to the true vine. But this morning, I want to talk about this. It may, add, may last a couple of weeks. Uh, God's love expressed in healings. God's love expressed in healings. 
and, and I want us to really pay close attention. So get your get your uh, uh, your pad and get a pen and a pencil and get your Bible. Okay, so we're gonna pray. Father, we give you glory and praise. We thank you for this time that we can gather together, come before your throne, Lord. We give you glory and praise, Father, that you're here with us, Lord, that you're blessing your word. You're anointing every ear to hear and every heart to believe that we become doers of your word and not just hearers only. Thank you, Father, for ministering to us afresh. We thank you, Father, that the same anointing that is here is permeating everywhere that is being heard. Those who are listening live, those who have tuned in, Lord, even those who's going to listen to a recording, Father. Dear God, and those that cross that path, Lord, they're going to hear word that is going to bless them, save them, deliver them, uplift them, as well as encourage them. Now, Lord, anoint your word afresh. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, as I said before, now, we're going to do it, deal with this particular topic now. God expresses his love in healings, in healings. Turn with me to the book of Mark chapter 5. We're going to read a couple of verses there, but there's a narrative that we're going to go through as we go through our text this morning. So as you turn to Mark chapter 5, listen very closely here. Healing is one of those topics that we sometimes is really misunderstood. And in most cases, the misunderstanding is the fact that do we really know the heart of God? Amen. Do we really know his heart of God toward healing? If we really know his heart, it wouldn't be a difficult topic. It wouldn't be a difficult subject. And also, it wouldn't be difficult to receive as well. As well as not knowing that healing has already been purchased through the sacrifice of Jesus. Yes, your healing, my healing, all of our healings has already been paid for. Through the sacrifice of Jesus, your healing has already been paid for. Isaiah 53, 5, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And here it is. And with his stripes, we were. You hear the word? Were. Past tense. We were healed. Did you get that? 1 Peter 2, 24, by whose stripes we were healed. I want us to understand that now. Healing is not something you're trying to get. Healing is something that you receive. Do we understand that? The Bible tells us to know the heart of God is to look at Jesus. Amen. To look directly at Jesus. Jesus not only did the things that the Father wanted him to do, but Jesus came to do the will of his Father and to help us to recognize the Father's love toward us. Amen. So when we see the ministry of Jesus, we should see our Father God, here it is, in action. When you study the ministry of Jesus, you see the God, the Father's heart in action toward us. If Jesus never told anyone no pertaining to healing, Jesus told no one no pertaining to healing, how is it that we think he tell us no today? Praise the Lord. Religion says you never know what God is going to do and sometimes God heals and sometimes he doesn't. But I challenge you to follow us in the word this morning because the word of God by the power of the Holy Spirit wants to clear up all of your doubts pertaining to a born-again believer walking in the divine health. Amen. Even in the midst of this pandemic, you are blessed, you are healed, you are whole. Anything attaches itself to your body, we pray that it dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we understand that that, that in in John chapter 5, verse 19, Jesus says, I only do what I see my father do. So if the father wasn't healing, that means Jesus wasn't healing. So Jesus So the father was headed to Samaria. So Jesus fulfilled going to Samaria. So if Jesus only done what he saw his father do, he must have saw his father healing because he had a healing ministry. Amen. Amen. We understand in that same chapter in in John chapter 5 and verse 30. Jesus said, I didn't come to seek my own will, but I come to seek and to do the will of him that sent me. 
So every, every activity of Jesus was on a divine order from his father. Amen. In, 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 in John 8 and verse 27 and 28, he said, I can do nothing of myself. Nothing. What he did was what his father instructed him. And, it's, and, and, and I'm paraphrasing this now. And in John chapter 9, verse 4, he said, I must work the works of him that sent me. So healing must have been the father's work. For Jesus to do the work, healing must have been the work. <laughs> Did you get that? Did you get that? See, we, see we, we want you to understand with a revelation today that Satan grip on your health is going to be loosened, cast down, and cast off of you today. You're going to walk in health beginning today. So let's go, let, let's go to our scripture text in Mark chapter 5 and begin with verse 21. And it's amazing. It says, and when Jesus was passing over again uh, by ship to the other side, much people gathered unto him and he was nigh unto the sea. Now, notice now, see, he went over to the other side to the city, to the gatherings. So he dealt with a demonic man in the tomb. Now, he cast the demons into the, to the swines. They ran off of cliff. So the, so the people came and said, well, we don't want you here. A miracle like that, a man being set free, but they don't want him to remain. So Jesus leaves and crosses back over. When he crosses back over in verse 22 says, Behold, there cometh one ruler of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. And besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. I pray thee, I ask thee, I beg of you, come ye, lay your hands on her, that she may be healed, one, and live two. Notice his setting here. Jairus was a ruler of the synagogues. His responsibility was taking responsibility of the strolls and, and who was doing the reading and all the activities in the synagogues. But yet notice the request and response he made to Jesus. Notice here now, with him being a ruler of the synagogue, don't you know him coming to Jesus put his reputation on the line? Did you know that uh, you talking about a ruler in a synagogue and hearing all the news that they're saying about Jesus, but yet, yet the synagogues couldn't handle a situation with his daughter, well, so he goes to Jesus. Did you get that? Amen. So then, so then, so then the church should be the first place you come to to receive from God. Well, it should be you personally, but if you need help, come on, up to, come on to us. We'll touch and agree. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Notice here now, not only a ruler of the synagogue, not only come to Jesus, not only make a request, he falls at Jesus' feet. And here it is. He worshiped Jesus. He worshiped Jesus. That's a powerful word. He worshiped Jesus. See, you only worship that which you acknowledge as being of worth. So if there's no worth to it, you won't worship it. See, that's the issue that you have with praise and worship. If he was of worth, no one, no one would have to tell you to praise and worship. So when you understand his worth, you don't mind worshiping. So he fell at his feet and he worshiped Jesus. He was acknowledging Jesus' lordship, praise God, over sickness and disease. This is quite a request coming from a ruler of the synagogues who's aware of the views of the religious leaders. Jairus' response expressed his faith, his confidence, his belief in, his dependency upon Jesus' authority from his father to heal his daughter. Now, where's your faith? Where's your dependency? Oh, we're not against medical science. We love medical science. We invite medical science. But then we have the stripes of Jesus that that enable us to go to a higher level of receiving. You see that? No, we're not against medical science. We thank God for all the knowledge of medical science. See, see, notice here, doctors are still practicing. They hadn't perfected it yet. They practicing. Well, Jesus don't have to practice. He heals. Glory to God. He delivers. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. It's been purchased for us. So then Jairus' response was, exp was expressing the authority of Jesus given to him by his father to heal his daughter. Verse 23 and 24 lets us know the request. He besought Jesus greatly, saying, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come lay your hands on her. Note of verse 24, Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him. One translation says that it was so many people as if they were trying to suffocate him. The request from the ruler of the synagogues to make a request to ask Jesus to lay his hands on his daughter for healing. You listen here, knowing what other, other religious leaders of view of him expressed his confidence, his trust, his belief, his dependency on Jesus' ministry. Jairus risked it all for his daughter. How much are you willing to risk that God get the glory for the manifestation he wants to bring in you through healing? He risked it all. Remember now, for him to risk it all, he had to declare that his daughter was worth the risk. Did you get that? His daughter was worth the risk because if healing was already in the synagogue, Jairus wouldn't have to come to Jesus. But since it, Lord have mercy, but since it was absent, he had to go to the one who came with healing in his wings. Let us go further now. We must understand. Remember, the, 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 remember Jared's request. His request came from a position of worship. Did you understand that? His request came from a position of worship. Who, Lord, he inhabited the praises of his people, but his request came from a position of worshiping, praising God. Giving God glory, giving God praise. Listen, listen, praying is most respected from anyone or could even honor God is through your worship. Because when you worship God, you're telling God he is worthy, worthy of his, he is worthy of my worshiping him. That which is of value will get your attention. Notice Jesus' response. Notice Jesus' response to Jairus' request, the rulers of the synagogue. The Bible says that Jesus went with him going to the ruler of the synagogue's house. Jesus met him at the level of his faith. His faith was Jesus. If you would come and lay your hands on my daughter that she may be healed, that she may be lived, his faith was expressed in his request. But then something happens in the midst of Jesus saying, I'm going to your house. Look at verse 25 and verse 26. A certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and and had suffered many things and of many physicians and had spent all she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. In the midst of going, there was an interruption. An interruption. A woman with the issue of blood. Oh, Lord, that, 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 that confronted Jesus when he was on his way to the, rulers of the, to the ruler of the synagogue's house. She, she, listen, she was at a point where she had spent all she had and, and for many years, but there was no relief. She spent everything, but there was what? No relief. She interrupts Jesus. When Jesus is going to Jerry's house, the woman intervenes. What happens when you're interrupted? Do you stay on focus? Do you stay on course when that happens to you out of the norm? Do you lose your faith? Do you lose your direction? Do you stay right there saying, I'm centered on Jesus. I'm going to meet Jesus. I'm going to stick with Jesus. Or do you allow the, the distraction to get you off course? Now, in the midst of this, I want you to notice the woman's statement of faith. Look at verse 27 to verse 30. 
It says that when she heard of Jesus, that's something right there. When she heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and, and touched his garments. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed from that place. Notice her statement of faith. Listen, listen. she heard of Jesus. I'm sure she heard of others receiving healing. That the doctors couldn't do her any good. But I heard of a doctor who came through 42 generations. The very Son of God manifested in human form. Let me try him. She made a faith statement based on the level, here it is, of her faith. Understanding Mark 11, 22 and 23 says, Have faith in God. For whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, if I but touch his clothes, I will receive my healing. Her actions followed her statement because straightway she pressed her way from behind. Not in front, she pressed because understanding this now, she didn't have a right to be in the crowd, but she pressed. They could have stoned her, but she pressed. So how bad do you want your healing? He says she pressed. It was a crowd of people, but she pressed. It didn't matter. She came to the front. She knew if she just touched the hem of his garment, that virtue would flow out of her. Said when she touched it, immediately, 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 it, it, her blood dried up. Faith draws out the manifestation of the anointing. When faith touches the anointing, there's a manifestation. <laughs> See that when faith touched Jesus, when all the others touching him, there was something different about her touch. Her touch was a touch of faith. And when faith touched the power of God, the power of God was released in her to grant her her request. Faith, trusting in, trusting in, trusting in. She trusted in a promise. She trusted in. She had a confidence in God. She relied totally upon him. That's why her actions backed up her statement. She made the statement, then she pressed. She said, if I but touch, faith statement. Notice, Jesus meet her at the level of what? Her faith. Of her faith. Verse 34 says, that Jesus, look at verse 34. Powerful verse because it says this. And, she, and, and Jesus said unto her, because remember now, when she touched his clothes, virtue ran out. She received the healing immediately. Now, I, I want to deal with this. Now, the Bible says straightway, or which means immediately. See, see the, the devil have us thinking that it take years for you to receive your healing. No, when Jesus, when faith touched Jesus, it was straightway. It was immediately. It wasn't six months. It wasn't three months. No, it was straightway. Glory to God. And we as born again believers, because these people were not born again. We are born again filled with the Holy Ghost of God. Immediately, straightway. We expect the manifestations to come. No, 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 no. Well, I'm believing God for the manifestation. Well, get out of time and get in eternity. Receive in eternity. Step back into time and let it happen immediately. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Healing is for the believer. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus goes on to say this in verse 30. Listen to what he says in verse 34. Jesus said after the dialogue, Jesus said unto the woman, daughter, know what, know what he's calling her now. First, he called a woman with issue of blood. Now he calls her daughter. Hallelujah. He said, daughter. Because, see, 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 there, there's, there's an intimacy to being developed here now. What faith has made a connection here. She to move from woman to daughter. And says that thy faith, daughter, you have a right to touch me. Lord, have mercy. Daughter, you got a right to healing. Daughter, you got a right to have faith. Daughter, healing belongs to you. Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Now, here's, I was get this now. It says, go in peace. Now, that's a powerful word here now. 
because he said, go in peace, which means then don't allow fear to come in to take what's been manifested. I want you to get this now. When he says, go in peace, he says, now, now you be in peace. You, are you being confident that what has taken place in you is going to last? So when he says, go in peace, he said, let the peace of God that pass all understanding guard your heart and your mind. Don't let anybody talk you out of your manifestation. He encouraged her to go in peace. In the midst of this interruption here, verses 35, verse 36 says this. And while he, Jesus spake these words, uh, uh, spoke these words, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, said a certain, uh, uh, a certain which says, tell the ruler of the synagogue, tell Jairus, Jairus, I have some bad news for you. I know Jesus was coming, could have been coming, but listen to me. Your daughter's dead. Why are you still troubling thou the master any further? I want you to notice Jesus' response. As soon as Jesus heard it, he strengthened Jairus' faith. Whenever you're making a faith stance and someone wants to bring you down, God going to encourage your faith. He's going to encourage your faith to allow you to stand until the manifestation comes. He's going to surround you with something. He's going to bring something across your path. You're going to hear a word. You're going to hear music. You're going to hear a song. Someone's going to say something. He's always looking for ways to strengthen your faith until you receive the manifestation. Because remember now, Jesus is on his way to Jairus' house. I got, got rudely interrupted about the one with the issue of blood death. And now he's getting back started to Jerry's house. And now we we'll come to him and say, don't trouble the master anymore. The daughter is dead. When Jesus hears it, notice how Jesus strengthened her faith. He said, be not fearful or afraid or alarmed or caught in anxiety or fearful. Only believe. You remember the statement? That's paraphrasing. Jairus, you remember the faith statement you made before we started? You asked me to come to your house, lay my hands on your daughter that she may be healed and lived. So you can't let other information drive out the faith statement. Oh, you got to hear me now. So when so enemy's going to attack your faith, hang on to your faith statement. Don't relent. When you make a statement of faith, stand in that. Don't become wavering. Stick with it. Stick with it. Jairus, don't move from your faith. We understand the doctor has a report. Yes, but whose report are you going to believe? Jesus immediately strengthened. He calms his fears. He calms his doubt. He calms his anxiety. He calms his hesitation. He calms his worries. Don't be fearful, only believe. Only believe. And notice that when Jesus got to the house that they are tormenting and they are moaning and they are crying and, and he says, what are you doing? She's not dead but asleep. Notice the same one that was doing that turned around and made fun of Jesus when he made the statement. So now Jesus can't take in all those who's not in agreement. <laughs> he only get the mama and the father and get the three that went with him and said, this is enough. We don't need any other interruption in the spirit realm. We don't need, we don't need no unbelievers in here. We need to drive everyone out of here. We need folk we can agree with. And he reached down and he, he speak words to her and grab her by the hand and raises her up. Notice he met her, he met Jairus on the level of his faith. Notice two different levels. One said, if I touch, one said, come. Woo! He met both of them at the level of their faith to produce the manifestation which they had a right to, which was healing. God will meet you at the level of your faith today. He will grow 
grow your faith. He will nurture your faith. He will encourage your faith. He will uplift your faith to make sure you get what you've been asking and believing him for. Let me encourage you. You don't seek, you don't seek healing. You seek the healer. Healing is the byproduct of the manifestation of the healer. We understand all the promises of God is a yeah and amen. We understand he always calls us to triumph. We understand that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead indwell us and it will quicken our mortal body. Notice the similarity between the two. The woman poor, Jairus wealthy. The woman rejected, Jairus respected. The woman shame, Jairus honored. The woman excommunicated, Jairus the leader of the synagogue. The woman sick for 12 years, Jairus daughter 12 years old. Jesus respond to them at different levels of their faith to grant their request and he is doing the same today. Allow him to meet you right there where you are that you receive total healing and restoration and be made whole in your body. Did you get that? We have a right to healing. We not only have a right to healing, we have a right to minister healing to others. Yes, 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 yes. COVID-19 has to bow its knee to the name of Jesus. Cancer has to bow its knee. Arthritis has to bow its knee. Everything, there's not a name that is above his name. And we've been given his name to use and to exercise authority in the earth. When it don't move, just say, in the name of Jesus. It has to bow. It has to bow. Yes, you should practice healthy, healthy living and healthy eating. Yes, you should exercise. But only one person can make healing happen, and that's Jesus. That doctors could set a bone, but they can't make it mend. Yes, yes. You can buy glasses, but not vision. You can purchase food, but not an appetite. You can purchase a bed, but you can't buy rest. You understand what we do here? So then let's begin to receive God's love being expressed in the healing of our bodies. Wherever you are right now, I just want you just to, just to, just to get in Jairus' position of worship. Amen. And make your request. Based on the finished work of Jesus, just say, Father, I receive your healing virtue flowing through my body from the crown of my head to the very sole of my feet. You're driving out every impurity, every infirmity, every trace of sickness, disease, poverty, and even fear. You're driving it out right now. We receive your anointing flow from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. You said you anoint our head with oil, our cup runneth over. Dear God, we thank you right now, Lord, that the anointing of thy healing power is flowing to every fiber of our being. Right now, in the name of Jesus, knowing that our body is at the temple of the Holy Ghost right now. Holy Ghost, work in this physical body. That same spirit that raised Jesus up, indwell us. Holy Ghost, thank you for healing this physical body. It is your temple, oh God. Oh, it represents you, Father. Receive the full manifestation and as you receive your healing, some of you may not be saved that is watching. Receive Jesus. Receive the healer. Hallelujah. The healer indwells you. Receive the healer right now. And let the manifestation of healing flow through you. Glory to God. This is how he expresses love. We ask that you continue to follow us along. And you're going to find in the word of God you have a right to walk in healing and in health. Let us, Father, we give you glory and praise right now, Lord. Those who are watching, those who have tuned in, we pray for the manifestation to God of your healing virtue that is permeating here 
it is also reaching there. It is ministering to every person that is watching. It is flowing in them right now. In the name of Jesus, it is flowing through them right now. Yes, you are healed. Yes, yes, we speak in the joints. We speak in the kidneys. Yes, we speak into hypertension. We speak in arthritic or arthritis conditions. We speak into migraines. We speak into visions, oh God. Yes, we speak into the entire body, the skeletal system right now being stronger. Joints and ligaments right now are being restored right now. Walk in it right now. Walk in it right now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank you so much for tuning in today. We pray God's blessings upon you that you are thoroughly blessed through the word today. Please tune in. Inbox us. Amen. Let us know what God is doing in your life. If you were blessed, let us know. If there's a prayer request, let us know. We want to join our faith with yours that you receive the manifestation of what you're seeking God for. Amen. And to the New Harvest Church of God family, the best congregation on the planet, we love you. We love you. We love you. Thank you so much for your love and for your support. Share the message with others. Amen. Hit the share button. Send it out to others. Let others be blessed. Let others know what God is doing and how God wants to bless and meet needs and heal bodies. Amen. And from myself and the only lady, Sister Walker, we want to say that we love you. Continue to practice uh, safe distancing. All the other protocol, remain safe. Amen. We love you. Until we meet again, God bless you. And we speak for the blessings in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.